we are back. We're not really back. For those that know, I used to have other videos and do different things, but times changed and I just lost my ability to make content. So if you're one of the few subs of this channel, this is just a video I felt compelled to make and I have no idea if I'll continue making things or not, sadly. But updates aside, let's get into it. So Forge has given us placeable AI for the first time ever. And everybody's hype about it. But since it just dropped yesterday, there aren't a lot of tutorials out there yet on how to get them to do certain things. One of the more asked questions I'm seeing are, you know, how do we get them to respawn? Once once I kill them, they just stay dead and don't do anything. And it's understandable, given how there's not really any object properties you could change to get any clear way of respawning them. So that's where I came in. Disclaimer, it took me seven hours to figure this setup out. And it's embarrassing because if I knew that, you know, what I was doing from the start, this would have taken maybe 10 minutes total. I just started scripting on Halo last night, trying to figure this all out. And I've never scripted anything in any game ever before. So I really won't have all the answers to all the questions. And I'm almost sure there are easier, quicker, and more efficient ways of doing this with scripting, but those tutorials aren't up yet, which is the reason why I'm here. So in the meantime, here's my simple solution. So to start, we're gonna load up my map, and it, you can use a blank canvas if you want, but I mean, for this example, I'm just gonna go ahead and use my own map that I've been messing around with, which I'm sure some of you will be familiar with. The idea was to make a firefight where you could defend the sword chamber from enemy forces with increasing numbers that are always rushing toward it. And, uh... I may eventually finish it, but I might not. Like I said, I, I'm no scripter. I don't do this kind of thing normally. So, I don't know. But, so... Make sure you have a nav mesh started up, and the way to do that, which if you want to figure out really how to do it, then there's so many tutorials everywhere on how to do that. But, but I'll skim over it just so that way you get an idea. Um, so you go into the gameplay tab, you go down here to nav mesh, and you grab a nav C point. This is just, uh, and then it's, it's so that way the game knows where to generate. Press the uh, snap to ground command right there and make sure it's touching the ground. Just anywhere where you have normal ground, so it could be placed out here even. It, it doesn't really matter as long as it's in the general like area where you can walk around in the map. So now you hold Y or whatever you have that input uh, set to and go to your build menu. Go down to nav mesh, make sure it's checked, and select build selected. It'll do the do its thing. Uh, and once it's done, you can go into your tool settings tab. There we go. It's done. Then you can go to the tool settings tab all the way back here. And then you scroll down until you find the nav mesh visualization. Turn that on. Now you'll see little arrows and jump spots and you'll see pretty much blue anywhere where a player or AI would generally be able to walk that so that way your your AI can navigate your map uh, but that's the most basic way of getting yourself a nav mesh like I said if you want to go more in depth yourself there's plenty of tutorials everywhere and uh, to, to really make use of this but that that's not really why we're here is it okay I know why you're here. So, now that our AI can walk around our map and function, um, let's place them. Find a spot where you want the AI to spawn. And for me, I'm going to put it uh, right behind this tree line. So that way it looks like the temple is being invaded from the trees. Because originally, there's going to be a barrier to prevent. Uh, players from entering from this side of the tree line so that way the Covenant can roll in the players can't go out here and in that way it's it's kind of a 
siege game mode. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go out here and place an AI spawner. And I'm just going to use the base AI spawner because I, I don't need to use the other ones yet. Uh, so we go down here to base AI spawner. Take it, place it where you want, and snap to ground. So that way it's guaranteed to interact with your nav mesh because if it doesn't interact with it, it will break and give you an error So and not spawn anything. I'm gonna place them on here. So for the setup, we're gonna start with the object name. Uh, you're gonna wanna name it something important that you will remember because uh, we're, we're gonna come back to this later. We're gonna actually be using this a lot. So I'm only gonna spawn uh, some elites. So I'll, I'll call this one elites and just and leave it be. Uh, we don't need anything from object mode, transform, or gameplay. So we can just shrink all those and uh, get, get them out of the way. And now we get to the good part. We select what type of AI unit we want to spawn. And I want two elite ultras with pulse carbines. And then I want an elite mercenary with a uh, energy sword. So that way, that's all we have. We can just close, we can shrink the rest of these. I can add all the way up, I can fill it up, but uh, I just don't want to uh, spawn that many elites because I don't feel like killing them all to get them to respawn. Skill issue. So next we have spawn logic. This is how we can tell the game to spawn them from our little script we're gonna make instead of just spawning them at the beginning of the game and, and then that's it with no respawning. We're gonna make sure it is triggered by script uh, the initial spawn delay doesn't really matter. It's, I'm assuming that it's for the very first spawn only, but just for the sake of this, because I haven't tested it out, we're going to leave this at zero, because later on we're going to add our own delay to their spawn anyway, so we don't really have to worry about that. But that's it. The rest of these don't matter, so we're going to shrink that. Squad behaviors. This is where you can add all those wacky details to your... Uh, to, to, to make them do things, obviously, for what they describe. Hell, you don't have to do any of it. Um, index is, I don't understand it, and I didn't use it for this tutorial or figuring it out, so I'm just gonna shrink that. And lastly, AI moves on. We will get to that in just a minute. That's important. Since we're on it, let's go ahead and set it up. What you do is you go back in to your object browser, and you go to AI move zone. What this does is it creates a zone that uh, the AI that is linked to it, which, oh, it's jumpy, uh, that is linked to it will always go toward this zone. It's, it's in a permanent march to come toward this zone. So as soon as they spawn, they're going to book it toward this. What I'm gonna do now is I'm going to increase this zone for mine to the size of the player accessible areas. So that way, anywhere that there's a player, these uh, these elites will be able to hunt them down and, and kill them or whatever. Perfect. Now they'll be able to come all the way throughout the entire temple they can go to the sides of it and what this means is they'll spawn back here and as soon as they spawn they're gonna they're gonna book it straight for the top of these stairs once they reach this they won't just stop moving it's not like they're gonna become just dumb and and just stand still right here once they reach us this just means that uh, this is where they want to get to they will not hang out anywhere out here where they shouldn't be they'll come up here to start you know attacking the players and since they're close enough here and this will allow them to also interact anywhere in the zone so they won't run out of it because the way the zone is set up is this is essentially their fighting area they won't go out here at all they will never go back down these steps unless you push them or something let's say with a rocket launcher or a vehicle so um now that we have that i'm gonna go over here I'm gonna name this. You want to name this something easy to remember. Uh, 
the same way that you would with the AI spawner. I'm just going to name this temple. So now that we have that and we have the zone and where, where they're supposed to go, we're going to go out here and we're going to link that. So you go back over here to your AI spawner and select it, go all the way down back to your AI move zone. And what you could do is it will bring this up over here and you just uh, you select that by pressing X and uh, that's it. Your AI zone is now linked to your AI spawner. So uh, with that, all we need to do now is just the general stuff like spawning. You just want to make sure that uh, for testing purposes anyway. We're going to go ahead and spawn a initial spawn point and a respawn point in case something goes wrong and we get blasted. Uh, there we go. So now the map can technically function as it is, but we want to do more than that. We want to get the AIs to spawn and then we also want them to respawn. So now that we've got all that done, time to get into the to the ugly part, the scripting. So if you don't have a script brain on the map, that's fine. Once you start placing nodes in the node graft, then your script brain object will automatically place in your map where you're currently floating in monitor mode. So I'm just, I'm right here, so that's fine. Um, so what you'll do is you'll hold Y, bring you to tools menu, and then hold up to go to node graph. And here we are, we got a blank canvas that we're gonna make look pretty ugly pretty quick. Go to the node browser by pressing X or whatever input you have for that, and we'll go down here to the events category and select an on game start node. Let's put this up here uh, somewhere to remember. Okay, and then we're gonna go back into it to the node browser and now we're going to uh, select the AI category and then you see at the bottom we have a trigger AI spawner and in a perfect world you can just you know connect these two right here the little rombie boy right here and connect it to this one and and you think okay well we're done on game start the the AI spawner will spawn but no that's not what happens when I say I worked on this for a whole hour I mean I spent the whole hour trying to get this thing right here to change to what I wanted into the AI spawner that I placed in the map and I could not do it no matter how much I spam clicked to figure it out so it turns out there's a small little method we need to use to make sure that the objects show up where we want them to in the node graph you can you can use any object in the game in your node graph and what we got to do now is deselect that and we need to go in here and we have to go down to variables basic category this is where we'll spend a little time variables basic and you will get something called an object reference node and it says empty so what this does is it lets you go over here to your node properties and where it says output object empty you just press a and it will bring you up the entire list of every single object in your map What's great is it is in alphabetical order. So all you have to do is just remember the name of the AI spawner. That's why the name was important. Uh, something you would remember, something related to your AI spawner and you select it and that's it. Press A to select it and then drag and drop that little circle to that. And now when the game starts, it will trigger the AI spawner and this is what tells it what AI spawner to, to trigger. This tells the game that we want an AI to spawn when the game starts. Now with that the game is fully testable. So let's give it a quick run to see if our spawn worked and if the elites will behave the way I've predicted so far. Okay, node graph built successfully. So yeah, works so far. Now, where are they at? All right, there they are. They made their way here. At no point did I ever say I was good at this game. Oh, there's one that's uh, invisible. <laughs> okay. They're dead. All three of them. Now, 
that's that's that now you're probably asking yourself what are we doing here you wanted to know how to make them respawn not to make them spawn in the first place you already know how to do that well in order to get to the respawning point we had to make sure that they spawned in the first place because you can't respawn if you never spawned so now we're good now now we are uh, now we're ready to start the the big part so For this, you can use the same script brain, so if you only have one, then all you gotta do is open your tool menu and go into your node graft, and you'll see where we left off before testing, that's fine. I'm just gonna rearrange this a little bit here, put this in the top corner, so we can keep this here. Now, okay now, so this is where I fell apart trying to figure out what to do. So I watched several tutorials on different scripting and how to do different things, um, several scripting videos, um, and combined what I knew from those videos, plus just kind of winging it with what I thought would be the logical answer and ended up where I wanted to be, so bear with me. Go into the node browser and you're going to have to go to the variables, variables advanced tab this time. And what we want here is the declare number variable. Just, this doesn't have to be connected to anything, so we can kind of just throw it wherever we want. I'm going to put it right here. Now, we're going to have to edit a few settings on this. Uh, for the identifier, we're going to change that to something. We're going to name it. We're going to name this kills. This is so that way the game can always know when you, we're talking about the same identifier to be talking about this specific number and the initial value is uh, however many AI you have set to the AI spawner I have three you might have four you might have five and I have all eight uh, whatever number is on this AI spawner you're gonna want to use that as your initial value I have three so I'm gonna start there and as for your scope uh, this just means I'm gonna use local this just means that if you have more than one script brain it's the only, this is the only one that can use this specific thing. And so that's set up now. And we're going to be working a lot with things that kind of reference this. Now, the goal here is to create a counter that will go up each time by one when I kill an elite. And once that number reaches three, it will activate the spawner again, but not before I get three kills on elites. So to do this, we're going to create an in the AI events tab, all the way up here, events AI. And on AI unit killed, we're going to place this here. And what this means is anytime you kill an AI unit on the map. And then we take a newer, a newer node that was added in. Uh, in season four, I think I didn't like I said I've never scripted and I just from videos I've watched this wasn't in the game at the beginning. We're gonna hit this uh, increment number variable in the logic tab and we're gonna we're gonna spawn that node in. Okay, you can go ahead and connect these if you want. Uh, that's fine. We still just have to edit. You don't have to edit this one, but we do need to edit this one uh, really quickly here. So the identifier, we're always going to be talking about our kills. So name that kills because uh, now the identifier isn't being named. It's being asked what identifier are we talking about. So the increment value is going to be one because that's how many kills or how many elites are killed. Uh, we're going to go to local on the scope again. Now, when I, if I skip over the scope, uh, every single thing that has scope as an option will always be local in this tutorial so if i skip over it just keep in mind that it is going to be local so that's something to remember so now that you have this the game will have an unseen kill amount for the elites you kill that will go up by one for each so how do we get something to happen once that number reaches three and this is a part i totally winged and luckily, because of my brain, I suppose, I was able to kind of figure it out logically. You'll go into the Varials Advanced tab again, and this time you'll get a 
um, a node called get number variable. Of course, we're gonna change some settings here. The identifier you already know is gonna be kills. And then for the scope is local. That's all you have to do with this one. This one is pretty cut and dry. It's just grabbing this number real quick. It's like, okay, I'm gonna grab three. Um, it was just important. It seems weird that you'd start with three, but you'll, you'll see once we get to the end of this. Now, to get the number to actually mean something, you're gonna have to go to a, uh, the logic compare category. And what we're gonna do is now set up a way for the game to say he has zero kills, so don't turn on the spawner. Well, now he has one kill, but it's not three, so don't turn it on. He has two kills now, but it's still not three, so we can't turn on the spawner. Okay, he's at three kills, time to turn on the spawner. And to do this, there's where we start. We're going to go into our little logic category here. Logic compare, and just grab a good old compare. Um, for this, you're just going to attach the value circle output to the operand A input of compare and then you just go to edit this and for b you want to set this to three the reason that's set to three is so that way it knows whenever this number your kills equals three it will do something now in order to make this do something we have to connect that a b the a equals b to something and you know I originally tried doing this. I tried grabbing a AI spawner and just connecting it directly to that because you think, okay, well, A equals B, so now we just spawn it. But the problem is, it won't let you. Oops. So we get rid of that. It's not a, it's not a, it's not simple, but it's just it's just the way the world works here in scripting. Okay. So now you add this bad boy. We go over here into the logic again. We go into logic and we grab a thing called a branch. Um, this just, I guess my assumption turns a numerical operation in equation into a true or false one. So what we can do is we can attach that A equals B to the branch. And there we go. So now that we have this, A equals B, and if A equals B, then we can do something here. And that is where we will use uh, the timer. Do you remember the timer I mentioned? Uh, how, well, not exactly the timer, but our spawn delay? That is in our logic category as well, and it's called wait for n seconds. This is just however many seconds it's going to take for this thing to happen, and uh, for us, that's our respawn delay. So I'm gonna set this to three seconds. You can set it to whatever you want, and that's fine. So if true, boom. Then it waits for three seconds, and now we go over here. Ooh, it's awfully slow. Select both the object reference from way earlier when we first started, and the trigger AI spawner, and duplicate that. And what you'll do is you'll drag this on down here, and after three seconds, trigger that AI spawner. So now we have a way for it to count how many kills we have. And once we reach three, which is all the AI that will spawn at one time, then that means they're all dead because we have three kills for three AI. It will spawn three more. It will activate the spawner again and repeat the process and endlessly. But even now, even if we tried it now, they will not respawn. And I know, I know it, this is probably getting convoluted. Well, there's a reason. It's because when we declared our number, our value is already three. This means we start the game with three kills somehow. So you're wondering, well, what, how does that work? Because now we have no way for the game to understand that we have less than three kills. And we have no way to reach three kills because we're already there and so on so what a very simple method of doing this and i mean it is really easy we're gonna have the number of kills reset to zero when we get to three kills which technically 
is also when we start the game. So what you're going to do now is you're going to go into AI events or events AI and you're going to go on squad spawn. You're going to place this down here. Um, maybe give it some more room because we're going to have some stuff over here. We, we, we don't have many nodes to go through though. So now we need to get a set number variable node from the, of course, variables advanced tab. It's like the holy trinity. The declare, get, and set number variable. Grab it and just kind of put it over here. Give some room in between because we have two nodes left. That's it, just two. And there's going to be one here and here. And then we're done. Okay. Now, of course, we're going to need to set these settings up the same way we would with anything else. Set it to kills. And course the value we're going to leave empty because we're going to change that and then set it to local scope okay you don't have to edit this because honestly i don't know how i'm sure there's a much better way of using this as well as this right here but i don't know how so unfortunately we are stuck doing it like this we're going to create another get number variable from the variables advanced tab and we're going to set it up well, the exact same way we did before. We're going to set that identifier to kills and the scope to local. Okay. So what this does is it gets the number up there that we declared for kills. And now we're going to do a little bit of math. Yeah, got to love the math. So we're going to go here and we're going to grab a subtract. And we're going to place it right here. Move this back just a hair. Whoop, what are you doing? There you go. Okay. Now we're going to do the same thing we kind of did up here with these two. Operand A and Operand B. Uh, for Operand A, we're going to select this value and put it here on Operand A. And then we go into the inputs and outputs and we set this to 3. So lastly, we take the result and plug it into the value and connect these two bad boys and boom and that is it now everything will function and they will respawn endlessly what this does is anytime an AI spawns from the spawn pad that we were working with it will erase three from your oh I have that set to 330 I better fix that bring it down there we go okay it will now subtract three from the kills so while you technically start the game with three kills as soon as the ai spawns especially the very first ai's that spawn will take those three from you before the script can understand that you have three kills somehow and now you will have zero and once you reach the kill count by killing three elites or in your case however many you have set up now it will restart the spawner and reset your kills to zero immediately on respawning them so what we're going to do okay so just a quick edit i had a bit of an oopsie and i forgot one very crucial part and it's something you don't have to do anything except connect these two i completely forgot that was an oversight and it's it broke pretty much everything. But now, just that one little line, and we're ready. Is we are gonna go ahead and test this out. Let's test it and see if everything lined up. Save your map, of course. I'm gonna go ahead and do that. You always wanna save frequently anyway, considering how busted, broken, and buggy Halo Infinite is, especially in Forge. The stuff crashes all the time. So prone to crashing. So here we go we're gonna we're gonna hold the play test button <laughs> let's give it a run okay no graph built successfully so so far everything seems to be working right let's see if we can ah you know i probably should have made this map a little better with weapons but i mean to be fair i did only start making this map like two days ago Okay, so I'm just going to scavenge the weapons that I need from them, and... 
Oh. There they are. Here they come. So, we know that they respawn at least once. I'm going to use the sword here and speed things up. And I'm going to try to hurry out here. Uh, so that way they can you can see them respawning. But notice they're not really focused on me as much as they're trying to book it over here to where they're supposed to be. Oh, I'm dead. <laughs> okay. So what this means is they are going to constantly respawn in that same spot and just keep coming. And once they reach up here, they're going to still chase you. See, they won't stop as soon as they get to the top of the... Uh, Let's hop the stairs. Hell, they're going to chase me in here, too. They won't do anything advanced or anything like that. Um, because that's that's pretty much a very, very crude, basic way of setting up the uh, respawning. Uh, I really don't understand scripting and all that much. And I'm sure very detailed and much better efficient and just better tutorials will start popping up soon but given the lack of the tutorials for respawning right now I wanted to give some help to those like me that just didn't really get it this is a super basic version and I don't know how to apply this to several AI spawners in an efficient way that doesn't require repeating this scripting process for each and every AI spawner because yes using this method you would have to repeat this exact same thing for every single AI spawner you have with some slight edits and that doesn't really sound great honestly speaking but it's a start so if you have any questions as long as they're related to something I did in this video you know I can probably help but as you know as for the other things about scripting sadly I, I don't know enough to answer but if I can I'll try um, but that's that's it that is how you get AIs to respawn indefinitely at least on a very simple and basic manner and I may or may not see you around next time